So that's the first thing. They're, they've done some very nice work. And another reason I think things are, particularly the markets have bottomed, is all the indicators that he would look at um, have um, particularly um, hit their bottom. I think what you've got, though, is reaching what I call a tentative bottom, and you're reaching for this recovery, which will be a subpar business cycle that forms. And that will form sometime late this year and early into 2010. The big change that's happened in the last month is 35% of global GDP is now being orchestrated or driven by what we call quantitative easing. This is printing money. And they're going to print as much as is required. And um, I think that's why the auctions haven't gone very well in the last couple of weeks. Um, the Treasury auctions in gilts and also in U.S. Treasuries. But um, because we don't know if we buy them, are they going to buy them back next week? Like, you know, what is the, mm. what's, what's the prices of these things? But that will sort itself out. But that's the big change, quantitative easing. And um, Canada will go there at the next meeting. And um, so will the ECB eventually be driven there, but it will take them, I expect, two more meetings to get there. So if you look at this world, I think we're beginning to see something that looks a little bit more promising. And that's really why the markets, with all this cash on the side, um, starts to say, well, perhaps there's some light at the end of the tunnel. And therefore, I think you don't have to worry if you've missed a bit of this run up. It'll go down again, and then it'll go up again. <laughs> I don't think you're getting in place what I would call conditions for a sustained bull market. I think conditions for a sustained bull market are a long way away. You have to have... Um, significant underpinnings to the growth cycle, to the business cycle. The business cycle has to be um, not dependent on the government sector. Remember, any growth or any of this um, s stabilization we're seeing is coming out of the government spending money. It's not coming out of you and I spending money. It's not coming out of what really drives an economy. It's coming out of supporting the bottom. So you have to go through the deleveraging. You have to go through sorting out paying down the debt. And you also are going to have to pay off a lot of the debt that's going to be put on the books by the governments. And so you're going to have subpar economic activity through the next, um, say, five years. The work by the bank credit analysts say that most of these um, events have led to seven or eight years of subpar. I don't think it will be quite as long because I think you've had global um, reaction to this problem. Um, but it's going to take a long while. So... I think you've got to think about positioning your portfolios for what I would call the business cycle that starts hopefully getting its feet in 2010, but starts delivering real earnings to you in 11, 12, 13. I don't think it's an inflationary-led cycle either. I think we will remove the liquidity. Um, we won't get into a liquidity trap. Um, but I think you have to tread carefully to do that because you could still see another very significant leg down on this market. Um, and that could come about like, you could see a major collapse in Japan of the banking system. Um, Japan, you put up there, Italy's um, debt to GDP is 110%. Well, um, Japan's at 180% and it's going to 220%, I expect. Um, it's got a demographic set of issues which go way against anything that they can do. Um, you've got people that really don't have enough to live on now in terms of pensions, etc. And they are in a deflationary trap. 
Remember that stock market hit 40,000 um, back in my career, which would have been in the late 80s, early 90s. I don't know what the December peak was. Eight, December 89. Eight, 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 89, was it? <laughs> and it's 8,000 today. And it's been at 40, it went to about 12, it went back to about 18, it went, it's gone down to 6, Six 7, nine. that's right, and now up, I think it's about 8,000 today. Like this is, so markets don't have to go back, <laughs> that's what I'm just <coughs> using as an example. We could fall and get trapped in not necessarily a Japanese disease, but some of those... Um, characteristics could play out as we go forward but I think you have to think a bit more positively I don't think you should get too excited about what's going on in the markets but I do think one should start thinking about it and I would close on saying if you're willing to own equities I think corporate bonds look pretty good <laughs> convertibles um, I, I, I actually like, well, you know, the preferred shares will look good. Um, but, you know, some of the, uh, cor the, cor the corporate bonds that are paying some very nice, you know, you're getting 400 basis points over. You know, that's pretty nice. How about Nortel's bonds? Um, I would think I'd go for things which have got good balance sheets <laughs> and actually products. Well, they've actually got some products. But I'm, I'm not good at companies. I don't really look at companies. So um, I think that's where we're at. And I think the big difference from when I was here about a month ago is really the glue is beginning to stick. The quantitative easing has been a very major move in the last month. Very major move. Um, and they're printing money like very fast.